up on him from that stand of trees over there. Hey, Reese, that's you. I sure am going to hate to have to break up old dude still. Jack Cooper! You sure you want me to go at him from over there, Reese? Gonna give him a chance to get away and slip up down a creek. Hey, Joe! Joe! You better be quiet. Moving up on him. He liable to hear you and run off. He'd be a darn fool to let us catch him, what with that new federal judge in Laredo. If he runs off, we won't have a chance to track him down. But we're gonna have to be hunting up them other stills. He might be able to get clean away. He ain't moving a muscle. You reckon he hears real good? Is this the way Rangers is supposed to take a prisoner? Buck, you just ain't been with us long enough to understand. We don't want to take this one. Then what'd we come out here for? We could have sat in a nice, quiet saloon and not took him there if we ain't gonna take him. Buck, your brains are loose. The captain said we was he to come out here. also said we're supposed to bring in this little fella. We can't bring him in if he ain't here. Say, howdy now, boys. I thought there was y'all out here. What's all the hoorawing about? All that screaming and that there hollering. I don't see nobody. You see anybody, Joe? Nobody at all. Well, he, he's standing right over there. Just be quiet, will you, Buck? Sure is lucky we didn't catch sight of old dude. What with the, the captain sending us out to arrest him? What kind of joke y'all are playing on me? We catch sight of you, dude. We gotta take you in. So far, we ain't seen you. Well, I seen him. Well, I don't know what's all the ruckus about. You boys come out and got me before. Old judge just fined me three dollars in three days in the calaboose. Kind of been looking forward for some Alma cooking. She's still cooking for the jail, ain't she? Oh, she's still cooking all right. But that old judge ain't around no more. We got a new judge now. And he doesn't know how to say three days or three dollars. He kind of leans towards hundred dollar fine. And three years is just about the shortest sentence as he hands out. Well, he ain't gonna give me no three years for having a still. Oh, he won't, will he? He's just liable to give you ten years. That's what he's liable to give you, all right. You ain't a fun in me, Reese. You bet your galluses we ain't. Well, I ain't a hankin' to spend no three years in no calaboose. Then get on your horse afore one of us sees you. I can't do it, Reese. I can't do it. Now, dude, you listen to me. Now, listen, Reese. I'm giving myself up. Now, you take me in. There ain't no man alive gonna say old dude and me could run off from the law. I don't know why you got so far to bother, Reese. It ain't like I'm some mean, ornery, no good. This court is now in session. The fine for interrupting its procedure is a flat $50. The next voice I hear had better be my own. doesn't even crack a smile the whole time he's in the room. No bet. Edward, my laden, pleaded guilty to stealing 14 head of prime cattle, taking him to Mexico and selling him. Ten years. Oh. Lee Hanna. Married Helen Leahy in Texas. Also married Maria Elena Fernandez in Chihuahua, Mexico. Also married Giselle Martucci in Arizona. And also married Leota Bell Thompson. That's in Texas again. Five years. Oof. That fellow ought to thank the judge. He can probably use the rest. Oof. Connor Donovan. Uh, here he goes again. Pleaded guilty to passing yourself off as a land agent, selling property, not absconding with the money. That's despicable. His court intends to make an example of you. Fair practices in business are a cornerstone of our government. You have attempted to shake the pillars of society. 
flagrantly abused the free enterprise system, rid roughshod over the rights of property. Are you sure that Judge Larkin can't try me if he gets to Uvalde? Even Larkin can't try a case on ashes. And this court will not condone or excuse your villainous behavior in any way. This court will make it clear to similar scalawags that their actions will be met by summary justice. It is therefore the sentence of this court that you be put to hard labor for 15 years. Oh. Dudley Alphonse Meeker. My name's due, Judge. You have been... That's his second mistake. The best thing old Dud can do is to keep his mouth shut. Offering them for sale? Oh, no, Judge. You operate it still? I makes the best sour mash liquor in all West Texas. <laughs> I'd sure be obliged if you'd sample some sometime, Judge. As it happens, I am a prohibitionist, Mr. Meeker. Well, do you offer this beverage for sale? Oh, no, sir. Folks just comes right out and buys it right up. It's good. <laughs> Dude's just getting himself in deeper with every word he says. Yes, it's a, it's a shame that old dude hasn't got somebody to, to speak up for him. Breeze. What? I figure old dude's gonna get about 10 years. Yeah, uh, unless somebody steps right up there and talks to that judge. Yeah. John, I sure wish he'd given himself up to me. And bury the bones of John Barleycorn forever! Whew. You know, the, the arresting officer carries an awful lot of weight with Judge Larkin. Huh? What'd he say? John who? Sure wish I was the arresting officer. I'd go up there and speak up for dude. He's getting ready to call sentence freeze. You better get up there before it's too late to speak up. Go. Court, Mr. Meeker, is that you... Oh, there now, Judge. Just one minute. Just one minute, Judge Lott. It's all right. Now, I come up here to Sir, see... Sir, this interruption is going to cost you $20. $20? Well, now, Judge, that's two weeks' pay. I, I arrested this prisoner. And uh, I come up here to speak for him. And first off, I, I just want to tell you that I've been knowing him, well, well, ever since I joined up with the Rangers and been drinking his liquor all that time. And I want to tell you, Judge, that dude's liquor is ever bit as good as any of that liquor you can buy over at the Laredo Saloon and twice as good as that swamp water that Fatty Brown tries to pass off as... I find the fact that a Texas Ranger would offer an endorsement of illegal whiskey appalling in itself. That he would do so in a court of law is unbelievable. Well, now, let me tell you, Judge. Dude's liquor is ever bit as good as any liquor you ever drunk in your whole life. <laughs> Sir, your outburst has already cost you $20. One word more and it'll be another 20 I don't think you've done me no good, Reese. But I sure am obliged to you. This is not a trial, Ranger. No witnesses are to be called, which makes your comment out of order in principle as well as in content. The prisoner has already pleaded guilty to charges. Apparently, you can't distinguish one court procedure from another any more than you can control yourself in a courtroom. Out! Now! Captain Parmalee, see to it. Oh, I uh, forgot something. The twenty dollars, Reese. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, charges on him for busting her window. Larkin would probably hang the boy for that. I didn't even get to say my piece for that $20. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Larkin's 
clerk. I'll get Parmalee and the judge. Yeah. Ah, we're too late. Uh, you get him back to Uvalde and tell McMillan what happened. Tell him I'll get them records one how or another. <laughs> Someone gone for a doctor? Yes, they have. I'm all right. What happened, Simpson? They burned the Uvalde courthouse, <coughs> ordered me out and burned it. I got in from the back, <coughs> saved some records <coughs> in a box. It's a buckboard. Joe? All right, here you go. Now he's got more than ashes. That's them. The records. Simpson, you rest easy. The doctor will be here in a minute. Outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. That fire was a deliberate attempt to, to foil the judicial process. I'd say that someone was trying to stop you from holding court in Uvalde. Hmm. Warrants, bail bonds, indictments. Why, it's incredible. There, there are documents here going back for years. I don't, I don't understand it. How's Simpson? Uh, Doc says he'll be all right. He, uh, he was just nicked. Just nicked? Why, they chased him out of town. You know, I think if they'd found Simpson had those documents, they'd have killed him. I hope Judge McCallum hasn't been harmed. <laughs> well, that ain't very likely. Ike McCallum runs you, Valley County, and his gunslingers make sure that... Gunslingers? Judge McCallum? Well, that's just what I heard. Ike McCallum's got 10 or 20 of them handy. He calls them deputies when he wants to do it legal, like... Captain Parmalee, I want these records taken to Uvalde and held there pending my arrival. Uh, uh, maybe you ought to let things cool down there a little bit first, Judge. The United States will not be intimidated, and I will not be intimidated. Is that clear? Reese, you heard the judge. Take the box to Uvalde. Yes, sir. Right now, Captain. Yes, sir. Right now. This man? One of my best, Judge. Well, that may well be, but I'm not appointing him to any court of mine. Man can't tell the difference between a trial and a... You want that box to get to Uvalde? Well, I appreciate your loyalty, Captain, but this man isn't going to take him. Now, uh, that ranger seems to know something about you, Valley. Why not send him? He's a new man with us, Judge. And I ain't half as good at rangering as Reese here. Well, you ain't never going to be if you keep dogging all your duties all the time. I'm I telling you that right now. I ain't dogging it, Now, Reece. Judge, I'm going to tell you something. I... Well, I think you made the right choice in picking Buck, really. I really do. He's a good man. And, and, Captain, it'll give him a chance for, uh, uh, to get a little experience, don't you think, sir? And the fact that there are four new dancers coming into town to work at the Laredo Saloon wouldn't have anything to do with all of this nobility, would it, Reese? Well, now, who, 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 who me, Captain? No, sir, I'd, I'd never let a, a thing like that get into my thinking. Not into my thinking, not for a minute, sir, never, no, sir, all right, you win this one. Buckmeister, take charge of that box. Well, Chad, and, Chad and Joe would be much better for the... Oh, they'll be right beside you every step of the way. <laughs> Captain, I ain't worth a dang at this kind of thing. You'll learn. In the meantime, Reese, you're in charge of the office. Yes, sir, Captain. I'll take the judge to Uvalde myself. Captain, Ike McCallum never was any good at paperwork. Most of this stuff... Three of you, uh, you heard the Captain. I'll get it. Go Do you get the feeling, Joe, that uh, that new clerk is pondering some big legal problem? Either that or something he ate ain't setting just right with him. Yes, and they got the box with them. I get the feeling he knows more about Uvalde than he wants to say. Do you get that feeling, Chad? 
Yeah? Yeah, well, I know it's gonna be a long hundred miles. And the odds are they're gonna be real busy ones. Just my card. He's a lawyer. That's right. I represent a number of clients in Uvalde County. People who've been under Ike McCallum's thumb for a long time. They'd like to see Judge Larkin come into Uvalde. <laughs> well, then they got loose brains. A number of my clients have been indicted on false evidence and perjured testimony. Well, they've been allowed out on bond but always with the knowledge that McCallum could have him arrested and confined. Well, now, Mr. Lawyer, isn't that between you and the judge? My people are caught between two factions. Judge Larkin goes by the record. But in Uvalde County, Ike McCallum makes the record. If Larkin takes McCallum's records as the facts, a lot of innocent people are going to suffer. And we're here to settle it. I've been authorized to offer $1,000 for that box. Well. What does an offer like that sound to you like, Joe? Uh, a bribe? Yeah. Are you offering us a bribe? Yes. Well, you've got a lot of nerve, Mr. Burke. I'll give you that. My clients have a great deal at stake. A bunch of innocent victims, uh, mostly orphans and women. Just desperate people. Desperate enough to burn down the Uvalde courthouse? Yes, they did that. But if you let me buy that box, that'll be an end to it. If we don't? If you don't, McCallum's men are going to try to stop you. Dogged if they don't sound like a threat to me. Take it as a warning. That's what it's meant to be. There is a threat, though. McCallum's deputies will stop at nothing to get their hands on that box. Well, now that's their lookout, isn't it? But, but just hold on, Joe. Now, just hold on? What do you mean, just hold on? You're not thinking of taking his bribe, now, are you? Now, I don't want the money. It's just that... Well, that Ike McCollum is just plain no good. Buck, that is Larkin's problem. Go on, let's get. McCollum is determined to keep federal jurisdiction out of Uvalde County. Destroy those records, and my people will help to see you get through. Whoa. Buck is kind of on the fence about this job, isn't he? There's something going on there, Joe, but I'll be dog if I can figure out what it is. Yeah. You better keep my card, Mr. Buckmeister. What I hear, you may need a lawyer. Now, just who told you that, Mr. Burke? If you get through to Yavaldi alive, look me up. Dawdling, Buck, we may never get to you, Valley. We may not get there anyhow if McCallum has his way. Well, since you're so all fired worried about McCallum, you better just give me that box. Not now, I ain't taking my eyes off that. Well, let's get on with it. Oh, wait a second, Joe. Well, what if the three of us split up and we each make out like we're carrying that box, hmm? Yeah, that way, McCallum's guns wouldn't know who to go for. Now, that's right, Buck, that's right. What do you say, Joe? It's worth a try, I guess. We'll meet in Carrizo Springs. Come on. Down for a good time? What would you recommend? How about a drink to start with? 
All right, how about a drink to start with? Well, you have. Oh, rye will be fine. Billy. We'll have ourselves a drink to the uh, bell of the Crystal Saloon. Now, what's your name? Miss Ivy Vine. <laughs> You're kidding. I have a brother named Pumpkin and a sister named Grape. Now I know you're kidding. My father was a humorist. Yeah, I'll say. <clears throat> a man with a sense of humor like that ought to be hanged. He was. You feel lucky? Sure. Let's see if you're right. All right. Let's see if I'm right. I just kind of figured it had to be you. Was that you out there causing all that ruckus, Joe? Well, I hope I didn't disturb you none. Mm -mm, not at all. It was my pleasure. Ivy, say how did uh, Joe Riley? How do you do? It was my pleasure, ma'am. I guess. Is Buckmeister here yet? Mm-mm. Uh -uh. No, I think I beat both of you. Wait a minute. Not Cotton Buckmeister. Big man from West Texas? That's where he says he's from, yeah. You mean Buck is with you taking those court records back to Uvalde? Yeah. You just can't keep your big mouth shut, can well, you, I didn't Jack? tell her a darn thing, Joe. <laughs> well, that's too funny. Cotton Buckmeister. Those records never will get to Uvalde if Buck has anything to do with it. Why not? Because Buck was tried in Uvalde, convicted, and sent to jail, but he broke out. Wanted man. A tried for what, ma'am? Breach of promise. Breach of promise? <laughs> it's the funniest trial ever held in Uvalde County. You had to buy tickets to get in. I only heard rumors about Judge McCallum. Uh, never been to Uvalde. No, never. <laughs> Wasn't that what he told the Captain? Yeah, I think that was what. Well, I can't really blame him for not wanting to go back there, Joe. I wonder if old Buck knows that he's carrying around records that might send him right back to the Calabozo. Well, he must know. Sure got himself in a fix, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buck does show up. I bet he won't have those records with him. Hmm. I hope he won't. Now, why should that make any difference to you? Get yourself hauled up into court one time where the jury belongs to the judge and he wants something you've got. <laughs> Under circumstances like that, you're likely to get indicted for crimes that weren't even committed. All right, Miss Ivy Vine, fess up time. Why were you indicted? Train robbery? Manslaughter. Manslaughter? My trial has been pending for three years. And I pay Judge McCallum a hundred a month to keep it pending. But Ivy, wait now, that's blackmail. Well, I suppose you could call it that, judicial blackmail. 
funny thing is, though, you know, I feel guilty. It was a hunting accident. A real, honest-to-God hunting accident. Ivy, you, you, you could beat a case like that. Think I want to? Do you think I want to go through a trial just to beat it? No. I'd rather pay McCallum and not go through a trial. I suppose there are a lot of people just like you. Sure. McCallum threw his spell over everyone. And the more they pay, the uglier and more guilty they feel. And there's no way of breaking the spell. You took your own sweet time, didn't you? Is Chad here? Yeah. You got the records? Did you think I'd lose them? Sure I did. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Huh? Breach of promise. Hello, Buck. Now, that was a dang lying frame up from beginning to end, Ivy. You know I never asked that woman to marry me. Well, calm down. Let me get you a drink. You know, Joe, I, I never thought of Cotton Buckmeister as a Don Juan, did you? Oh, he's a real heartbreaker, all right. You couldn't break Ike McCallum's sister's heart with a sledgehammer. Ike McCallum's sister? Is that who you asked to marry you? I never even asked that gal a time of day. Don't tell me you haven't pulled the records of your case out of this box, but... Ah! <clears throat> well, uh, knowing what we know now, Joe, uh, I think maybe you and me ought to take custody of this here box. Oh, no, you don't. I see Come on, give me the box. Just leave it right there. Get out of the way. I don't want to hurt anybody. We'll settle these cases right now. Back to jail, Buck. Well, I've been in worse places. Come on, Buck. See you, Ivy. I'm gonna have to get that drink the next time around. Well, the next time around, I'm gonna poison it. Bye, Ivy. these, lady killer. Now, come on, Buck. We gotta get you back to the loving arms of Ike McCallum's sister. A fat chance. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, lady killer. Nobody here. You hear a snapping sound? Yeah, like a trap springing shut. And we're in it. I guess maybe we'd better try to keep them folks from coming in. Who? Oh, we got a visitor. That's like McCallum. gonna have an ugly set of relatives, Buck. Heidi Cotton. Welcome back to your Valdi. You know, I was afraid you wasn't gonna make it. I see you got my court records all safe and tidy. 
You know, I've been meaning to go through all that paperwork and uh, sort it out. Might just as well get started. Oh, now, Cotton, you better tell your ranger mates here some of the particulars of what's among those records. What's among them records, Cotton? You know there's a warrant in there for Cotton Buckmaster's arrest? That don't make no difference to them. Well, a fine set of buddies you got. You know, I've been meaning to tear up that warrant and throw it away and just uh, let bygones be bygones. Nobody ain't touching that box, mostly you. You want to go to jail, Cotton Buckmeister, hey? Ike McCallum, you're the kind that'd eat a meal in front of a starving man and throw the scraps to the coyotes. Now, just get out. Now, you listen. Now, you listen to me. Joe. Huh? Did I hear right that that Judge McCallum said that there was a warrant in this here box for a fellow named Cotton Buckmeister? Yeah, you did. Well, now, how many Cotton Buckmeisters you ever run across? Uh, only just one. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, then... Then the odds are that this Cotton Buckmeister and the Cotton Buckmeister that Judge was talking about is the same fella. Odds are. Well, I think we'd better take him into custody and hold him for Judge Larkin. Oh, you two are very funny. We're just trying to do our job, Buck. Now, hold on, Chad. I, uh, I think we ought to help this man. Why, Why? after all, he was breaching promises uh, before he joined the Rangers. Well, do you, do you really think he's reformed, Joe? Buckmeister, are you reformed? I, I think we ought to help him, Chad. Well, I think you're right, Joe. But, now, I tell you, when you go to stand trial, you just tell that judge that you were clean out of your head. And we're going to back that up. You just keep it up. Keep it up! Oh, Couple of you boys better get around to the back of that building. Make sure they don't get away with that box. Come on. Fine, boys. Make them keep their heads down. Keep... What I don't see is why McCallum took such a funny way to frame it. Because that's his way, making folks look a fool. You sure do. I was running for sheriff. I thought you was running for the alder. I was running for sheriff, and I had the votes, too. To let the fool trial come along, it was nothing but politics. You don't mean to tell me you played politics with a woman? I never played nothing with her. Well, now, Buck, now, uh, now maybe the best way out of this thing is, uh, is for you to go ahead and marry Ike McCallum's sister. Good thinking, Joe. Let's call McCallum. We'll negotiate. No, I ain't gonna do it. That Ada McCallum is as big as two elephants and as dumb as an adobe fence, and I ain't gonna marry her. Buck, you sure got a closed mind. Somebody owes me a new hat. You'll be lucky to have a head to put it on by the time Mike McCallum gets through with us. Cotton Buckmeister? Cotton? Cotton, it's me, Ada McCallum. Oh, I've got a nice hot supper for you. Well, ask her what it is, Buck. Maybe she'll go away. Rabbit stew and dumplings. Oh, I've missed you so much, Cotton, honey. Well, let's get that stuff out of the window and let the lady in. I'm starving. Yeah, go. I always knew you'd come back. Well, speak to me, Cotton Love. Go on, speak to her, Cotton Love. I'm getting out of here. Cotton. Howdy, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Cotton. Oh, Cotton Love. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, Cotton. Let me take a 
good look at you. Oh, honey, I've lived for this moment. I'll go get the captain and Judge Larkin. Bye, Edith. God, love. You take me with you, huh? Please. <laughs> God, God, love. <laughs> Don't fight! Don't fight! It's Ada and her fiance. Cotton, you take me with you, Cotton. Oh, love. I've waited so long for this. No! Oh. Oh. Cotton, Five Cotton, gets you a ten, he doesn't get away. You hear? Cotton, no, no, please. Take me with you. Take me with you. You hear? Cotton, no, please. Take me with you. Oh, no! Oh, Cotton! Oh, why? Why you? Why? Why? Oh! Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Ah, but she sure makes a mighty fine pot of stew. Let me taste it. Half you men better get after Buck and keep Judge Larkin occupied. Now get going. We gotta get them records of all going to jail. Come on. Oh, I should have put dynamite in this stew pot. You know, baby sister, you got a great fund of mother wheat. Why they have a husband? That is good stew, Bill. I'm full. Ah, going quiet. Yeah. I liked it better when they were shooting at us. They ain't gonna be going nowhere. They'll be shooting again. Judge McCallum's deputies. Rest of them are shooting at Chad and Joe. Unpardonable. You really think Larkin would put Buck back in jail? You see no limit of the law, Larkin. What's your bet? Jail.
That was a darn fool thing to do to them records, Joe. Well, now, the way I see it, Chad, boy, we, uh, we saved them innocent folks some grief. All them records don't make no matter to them, no goods, no how. They're just gonna go out and break the law again. I must say, you do have a point. records. The whole kit and the boodle just blow sky high. Sorry about that, Buck. Yeah, now that is too bad. It's, yeah. That's a suffering shame after all the work and the trouble we went to to, to get them here. It's, it's just a crying shame. Valde County, you have got no jurisdiction in my court. Ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor of retaining Judge McCallum in his present office will signify by saying aye. You just lost an election, McCallum. Sit down. Having studied the available evidence briefly, I hold you and your deputies responsible for conspiracy to commit murder for attempting to bribe a federal judge, for felonious assault on the legal representatives of the state of Texas in the person of three Texas Rangers. And I promise you there will be more charges brought as further evidence is discovered. I hold you all without bail for trial in the next session of this court. Quiet. Quiet. Order in the court. Now, there are people in this courtroom who not only took the law into their own hands and willfully destroyed public property, but also offered a bribe to a duly constituted federal law officer. I am given to understand that those involved are people who were victims of Judge McCallum's army of deputies. The court understands their anxiety, but I will not condone the use of force or coercion anymore then I will condone that of thugs and villains. The fine for each of you involved is $50 in a year's hard labor. Pay the fine to the clerk. Jail sentence is suspended. Well, Sit that's down. more like it. Cotton Buckmeister, step up here, please. That's you, Buck. <laughs> Friends like you guys that God don't need enemies. You're the ball breaker, Buck, not us. Only one document survived the explosion. This warrant. One warrant survived. It had to be mine. It says you broke jail, Buckmeister. He, he also broke my heart. That's what he was convicted for. Well, it's a serious business, Buckmeister. You uh, got something to say for yourself? I was framed. Oh, well, then perhaps you better appeal the case and try it again. No, sir, I'll go to jail first. Breach promise two years, breaking jail five years. That adds up to uh, seven, hmm? How long have you been a ranger, Buckmeister? Two weeks, sir. How long is your enlistment? Three years. Well, you'll be under government supervision for that time, so we'll reduce your sentence to three years and grant you probation. 
And I'll appoint Mr. Cooper and Mr. Riley here, your probationary officers. You'll be responsible to them for your good behavior. Responsible to them? No, sir, I'll go to jail. I'll take the seven years straight. Uh, Mr. Judge, sir, we're, uh, we're gonna take real good care of this man, and we're gonna see that he goes to Sunday school once every week. Yes, Don't sir, and, and Mr. Judge, I guarantee you that we'll try our very hardest to improve his moral character. I'd rather marry Ada McCallum. <sighs> Oh, God, love. Oh. Hi, brother. You heard him ask. I sure did, baby sister. Well, here's my answer, Mr. Cotton Buckmeister. Why, why, I wouldn't marry you if you were the only man in Texas. Look out! I thought you said she was dumb, Buck. Smartest woman I ever saw, Buck. I'll get out. The more. Yes, Oh, Ada. Ooh. Ada McCallum has her pride. And don't you forget it! Very good, my man. There, you see, Joe, he can follow orders. Sure. Sure, if they're simple enough. Good man, Buck. Thank you, Buckmeister. You're learning fast. Where are you going? Oh, I thought I might drop over to Carrizo Springs and inform Miss Ivy that her case is no longer pending. Buck, please, mind your manners. A leg up. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I guess I just misjudged my own strength. <laughs> Chad, uh, Chad, you're all wet. Yeah, and that being the case, I guess I'd better go deliver the good news to Miss Ivy myself. Uh, oh, I'd rather be a probation officer or a grizzly bear than that buckmeister. You don't suppose Larkin can let us off, do you? Not a chance. down here. Got yourself here, Joe. Now, where's old Morgan? Uh huh. Ooh, my shot must have been a mite high. I was aiming for his shoulder. Oh, Reese, you're not telling me you picked him off. Well, now, of course I did. His head popped up, and so I took my gun and I, Reese, I just. With that sun shining like it was in our eyes, we couldn't see anything behind these rocks. Did you ever hear of clouds? Clouds? Uh, looky here, Reese. Uh, now, why don't we settle this thing for good and all? You go over there and pump another slug into Morgan. Now, just one minute, Joe. Ain't you got no respect for them that just departed? Now, if you'll uh, keep an eye on this sweet bunch for me, I'll go over there and do it myself. 
I'll watch him for you, Joe. Go ahead. Well, now, even a, a no good like Morgan there, he deserves. He ain't gonna feel nothing. I, I ain't dead. Well, ain't that a big surprise? Morgan, you snake, you snake! Well, you can't blame a man for trying. Who can? Uh, Reese can. Uh, can he, Chad? Well, Reese can do almost anything. Morgan, where you got them horses tied, huh? Why should I have to tell you? Well, I'll tell you why you should tell me, because you're gonna have to walk 20 miles back to Laredo. Uh, that's uh, a little bit more like 30, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, I make it uh, 30. Yeah, well, they're uh, up in the Arroyo. It's just... Uh, Ain't your day, is it, Morgan? Uh, we get the horses, Reese. How about you and that shot you had at Morgan, Reese? Just never you mind. Never you mind. Easy, boy. Just uh, take her easy. Ah! Now hold on, boy. Ah! Ah! Well, now uh, that's uh, that's some better, boy. busy as he'd have been, Captain, if he tried to keep all these pocket clocks going at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but he'd have known the time of day. <laughs> uh, never mind about the pocket clocks. What about my 200 head of prime beef you were looking for? Well, I can guarantee you, Stan, that it wasn't Morgan that rustled your prime beef. That's just about what I figured to hear. And you know something you don't know a blame thing more about them cows than you did before. Stan, we've we got, got patrols out. Yeah, I know. But they ain't finding nothing. And they ain't finding nothing because them cows ain't in Texas. The Mexican police are cooperating with us. I just sent Reese down to join the other men. Uh, Stan, where are you going? Connolly, stand around waiting in my long suit. Hmm. Well, Captain, maybe, uh, maybe Joe and me could run across. No. Uh, how come you two are so positive that Morgan didn't rustle Stan's herd? Oh. Well, sir, we, uh, we figured it out all logical-like. Well, Joe... Maybe you could kind of explain it to me. Well, sir, for one thing, there wasn't a pair of shaps among the bunch. Now, let me tell you something, Captain. A man would have needed a pair of shaps out there, because if he didn't have them, the chaparral on Grevy's land would have cut his legs plumb to smithereens. Makes sense. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, another thing, Captain. The bunch that Morgan was riding with, well, they were tough as those kind of bunches come, but they're, they're not the type of guys to go around rustling cattle and that kind of stuff, because... I, that's just too much work for them. And that makes sense. Thank you, sir. Well, sir, uh, them is the facts, but, uh, but I wasn't convinced. Uh, no, sir, I wasn't 100% convinced until I... Till, uh, till, uh, what, Joe? Well, I... M tell the captain, Joe. Come on. <laughs> Well, all I did was uh, snatch Morgan up by the neck and shake him a little, sir. If he'd have known where them cows was, I'm sure he would have told me. Now, Joe, I didn't hear what I thought I heard you say, did I? Well, sir, all I did was... Because if you manhandle a prisoner... Captain, a man like Joe Riley, a man of his integrity, manhandling a prisoner? Why, sir, he would never do a thing like that? Why, why that's illegal. Sir, I would never do nothing again the law, and, and that's the pure gospel. Joe, I know that's the truth. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain Parmelee, sir, uh, 
Uh, Chad and I haven't had anything to eat for a while, and it's all right. Great. Thank Back you. in an hour. What? But. Back, back in an hour, but, but Captain, we've been, we've been on the trail five hard, long days. Uh, sir, we kind of had ourselves a, a relaxing type evening planned. Y yes, sir, and <laughs> you really can't do a, a whole lot of relaxing in, in an hour. down off of there. <laughs> you mind telling me just one thing? Whose idea was it to keep this young buck? What do you expect to accomplish up there on that rafter? Now get down. Oh, now, Chad, we can get him down off there. Well, all we got to do is go up that ladder and, and hop up on that beam and, and haul him down. Yeah. Look, I'll stay down here, and I'll make sure he doesn't run out when he gets down. All right. Uh, Joe, huh? what do you mean by you go on up that ladder, Chad? Your leg ain't broke. Well, now, Chad, if you, if you can't do it, I, no. I'd be glad to. Joe, I didn't say I couldn't do it. Well, Chad, I don't need no excuse. Now, look out, boy. Let me go. Just hold on. I'll do it. All right. Get you down. Now don't move away from me. Just, just stay right where you are. What's the matter with you, boy? Cat got your tongue? Do you speak English? Joe! Joe, my spurs caught. Give me a hand. Well, I dogged if it ain't. You got yourself in a real fix there, Chad. You gonna put me in jail? I already told you, boy, we're not gonna put you in jail. What's your name? Asota. Great smoke. Now, you listen to me, Grace Moe. The first thing we're going to... Indian? No. You know Comanche talk. Well, I grew up with the Comanches. You got a big yell. Well, I had good teachers. I went to mission school. I can tell. I can tell you speak real good English. You're not going to put me in jail? No. For why? Boy, did you ever hear of Big River? You know him? He was one of my teachers. Big Indian. Strong. But he was wise. Wise, Gray Smoke. He told me one time that a boy can't be good or bad. All he can be is right or wrong. Now, you running with that Morgan gang, that was wrong. Morgan give me food and blankets. You a thief, boy? No. Take to eat sometimes, nothing else. That's the only thing. The only thing, son. Stopped us from throwing you in jail with the rest of them outlaws. You understand? Let's go. Thanks, Joe. You betcha. Come on. Whoa, 
Cyril. Bring us a couple of steaks and some bread and butter and start with a couple of beers, huh? Thank you. Well, I'm about as tired as I can be, Joe. That old captain's saying, be back in an hour. I wonder if he yet. Who, Captain? That scrawny Indian kid, who? Well, he, he does look a mite peek at Joe. Of course, of course, we can't give him nothing to eat. If we give him something to eat, well, we'd never be able to get rid of him. Hungriest looking boy I ever saw. Of course you're right, Joe. You're absolutely right. We don't dare give him something to eat. Chad. Chad, you haven't got any feelings. Why, well, that boy won't go back to the reservation because he's hungry. He's hungry. Now, if we give him a steak to eat, you just watch how quick he'll hightail it out of here. I'll watch. You, uh, you hungry, boy? Oh, Riley, the ranger here'd like to buy you a steak, Gray Smoke. Okay. Uh, don't do me no favors. Put yourself down, lad. <clears throat> Cyril, make that three steaks. Make that three steaks. Well, now, who we got standing at the bar, Joe? Dead Charlie Stamp? I wonder what he's doing here. Why don't you go ask him? Yeah, maybe I will. You reckon, uh, you reckon you need any help, Chad? <clears throat> Well, now. Howdy, Charlie. What's new, Chad? Nothing much. What you doing here in Laredo? Nothing. Just got here. Mm-hmm. Who's he? Friend of mine. What's his name? Pick one. Changes every day. <laughs> yeah, but you don't change every day, do you? You arresting us, Chad? Well, I don't know. You wanted? Not that I know of. Let's keep it that way, hmm? You know that other fella? Sam Tupper. Sam Tupper? Huh? He's another gunfighter. So the story goes. you figure we got before we got to get back to Captain's office? About 20 minutes. Well, oh, I'm off a good hot bath. <laughs> Dog, if that ain't a good idea. <laughs> I'm still waiting, Joe. Well, what for? For when that young Indian buck's gonna hightail it. Gee, uh, still back there, Chad. Well, just turn yourself around, Park. Come here, boy. Come on in here. Now, why didn't you do like we asked you to, boy? Don't you figure maybe your ma and pa are gonna be wondering what become of you? Got none. Well, now, look at here, Gray Smoke. Somebody in that tribe must be looking out after you. Nobody. Smoke? Smoke, Indians don't act like that. Somebody. Nobody. Oh, gee. She could run off the reservation, boy. What for? My pa stole horses. Run off. My mom went with him and left me in that mission school. Well, now you know the tribe ain't gonna fault you for what your pa did. Oh, you know that's a fact, Grace Smoke. Won't go back to the reservation till I got the gold to pay for the horses my pa took. <clears throat> well, how much would that be, Grace Smoke? Maybe Joe and I can. Too many horses. And I gotta earn that gold. You got guts, boy. Yes, sir. You got guts. <laughs> Here you 
go, Grishmoke. <laughs> Scrub yourself good, boy. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine, lived a miner, 49er, and his daughter, Clementine. <laughs> Now, Joe, I've been telling you you've been leaving out the best of that song. Doggone it, that's not the part I've been leaving out. Let's go again. In a cavern, in, in a, a canyon, excavating for a mine. But not too short, Joe, and, and leave him some sideburns. Well, you leave me be, Chad, and let me get this thing done in peace. Joe, I really think we ought to take him to the barbershop. Oh, shut up, Chad. You're disturbing the artist in me. Well, shucks, look how good I cut my own hair. Uh, just like I said, we ought to take him to the barbershop. Cooper, we ain't got time now. Will you just let me get this thing done? All right, all right, go ahead. You ready, boy? And if anything goes wrong with it, you just trot it back. We'll fix her up, good as new. Oh, excuse me, I'll find After out. After me. I just thought it. Hey, Sam, whenever you can, we're in kind of a hurry here, please. Uh, in just a minute, Chad. Uh... Where do you keep the boys closed? <laughs> oh, they're right over. I said after me. Now, you tell me again about how you fix it if anything goes wrong. Hey, I didn't hear you, Sam. Tell me. Well, we... We stand behind our merchandise, and if... Where'd you say you kept the... You, uh, you don't mind if Sam tells me where some things are, do you, Jug? You're a lucky man, Riley. My name is Jug Harriet. Put this on my bill. Oh, oh, now. Uh, everything in this store is cash and carry. You're pushing it, Riley. Jug, pay for it or leave it late. Count it, Sam. Count it. Well, there's two dollars too much. But get it. Oh, no. No, let's give this gentleman his change. And that way, he won't never have a reason to come in this store again. I come and go as I please. That really Jug Harriet? That's him. He, uh, he didn't say why he was in Laredo, did he, Sam? No, he didn't, but, well, it's, it's got to be a killing. For a minute, I was afraid it was going to be yours. Uh, not while I'm facing him. Uh, Joe, that makes three. Chad, that makes four. Wherever Jug Harriet goes, Ella Snyder's bound to go, too. True. Uh, Sam, uh, Sam, we need us an outfit for this here boy. Hey, that's right. Oh, uh, style or for comfort? Oh, a little bit of both, Sam. Uh, boots, too? Boots, too. How about a shirt? And a half. And a half. Uh, and not that one. <laughs> hey, you, you like this? Uh, How about this one? Let's try it. You want me to what? Take this young fella into the Rangers, Captain. You, you did say he was 14. Uh, well, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, the best he can tell, he's, uh, he's 14. Now, how many 14-year-old rangers do you know? Joe? Chad? <sighs> well, sir, Joe didn't exactly explain it right. You try. All right, sir. Now, now, now this young fellow, well, he just hasn't got anybody. His pa was a horse thief, and, well, he just flat refuses to go back to the reservation. Now, well, Joe he's and I... An Indian? Comanche. Comanche. You forgot to mention that. Well, sir, it just, uh, it just plumb slipped our mind. And his father was a horse thief. Well, now, that's right, Cam, but now you take my word for it, this boy has got the makings of a fine ranger. I'm sure. And one other thing, Cap, I mean, 
<laughs> we don't expect for the, the boy to be able to go out on assignments. Not right away, but... Well, we thought he could clean the guns, take care of the horses, and see to the supplies. Hey, Cam, we... We kind of thought of him as a company runner. Yeah, that's right. You ain't never seen anybody run like he can, Captain, and, and climb, climb. Why, that boy can climb better than anything I ever saw. You, you want to see the way he goes up a raft here, Captain? Why, well, right up to the top, one, two, three. Right, Chad? Right, Joe. Gray smoke. Yes, sir. Do you, uh, want to join the Rangers? Yes, sir. The man I'm looking for knows horses. I do, sir. He'll also be company runner. That's a very important job. Yes, sir. He'll be in charge of the barracks. He'll make sure every gun rack is kept locked at all times and every weapon is clean before it's put away. Yes, sir. You think you can handle that job? Yes, sir. Every man who joins this outfit goes through a period of probation. You understand? Yes, sir. He does his job, he stays. If he doesn't? Yes, sir. All right, Ranger. You're on half pay starting right now. You know where the barracks is? Yes, sir. You go over there and you find yourself an empty bunk. And you stable your horse with our stock. And look around. You report tomorrow morning here at 6 o'clock for duty. Dismissed. Yes, sir. You were great, Captain. Just great. Did you two find something humorous in my procedure for enlisting personnel in the Rangers? <clears throat> ah, no, sir. No, sir. Not me. I. No, sir. All right. You two are on duty in town tonight, sleeping shifts. Oh, Captain, Captain, we just we just come in off the train. Are we that short-handed? I was Company B until you came in this morning. Everybody else is out after the rustlers. Well, I, uh, I sure hope the word didn't get out, Captain. Why, Joe? Well, we just seen uh, <coughs> Charlie Stamp, Tupper, uh, Jug Harriet be in town. Ellis Snyder with Harriet? We didn't see him, but uh... I'll give odds that he's here too. You two make a tour around town. See if you can find out why they're here. Right, yes, sir. <coughs> Draw us a couple, will you, partner? It's Ellis Snyder over there with Jug Harriet. That's him, huh? Well, Ellis never changed. Hmm. Thank you. Thanks, boy. Looks, uh, looks like we got one more friend in town, Chad. You need some help, Joe? Brad Cheney. But you still in jail, Fred. I've done my time, Joe. What you doing in Laredo? Having a drink? Well, not dogged if you ain't. But what you gonna do then, Fred? I'm gonna have another? Well, now you have a real good time. I've seen that one before, Joe. Fred Cheney. Fred Cheney? Oh, I thought he hanged. He should have. Hmm. Chad, did you ever have the feeling that you were sitting on a powder keg and uh, just about ready to explode? Why, Joe? Is this five mangy gun slicks in town? No, Chad, because there's eight mangy gun slicks in town. Joe! Yo. Saints be praised, but would you believe who I just saw in the street below? Timothy O'Brien. Uh, that's nine. Yeah, and it's sure no coincidence that all them fellers are here at the same time. What sure is? About as much coincidence as there is in thunder and lightning turning up in the same rainstorm. 
Yeah. Chad, I think we ought to go over to that saloon and grab them all and throw them in the calabozo. Well, now, Joe, you know we can't do that. Can't arrest a man just for being in town. Chad, what if we went over there and ordered them to turn in their guns while they're in town? Now, that way, they're bound to do something we can arrest them for. Wouldn't work. Oh, but I got an idea, Joe. Why don't we go over the saloon, order all them fellas to turn in their guns while they're in town, and that way, they're bound to do something we can arrest them for. I just got through saying that. What's what you just got through saying? Why, you... <laughs> oh, no. Since this is your idea, Chad, uh, you mosey on over to the saloon, and I'll just sit here quiet and wait for you. Why, you tell those no goods to, to turn in their guns. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, just go ahead and sit here, quiet and peaceful like, and uh, miss all the excitement. I ain't gonna miss nothing. <coughs> Whoa, horse, you, you mind telling me where you're heading? Well, I'm going, uh, I'm going over to the captain's office. And am I gonna have fun watching you squirm while he's chewing you out for stirring up them gun <laughs> <laughs> Get through dancing with that carpet bag, you'll find me in the captain's office. Parmalee is who, Chad? Well, of course he wasn't in there, Joe. The man's standing right over there. Well, I can see that. Well, now, Joe, if you can see that, why did you go in the office looking for him when you knew he was out here? Because I didn't know he was out here. Well, all you had to do was ask me, and I'd have told you. Look, Joe, <laughs> why are you going over there? The man's in the office. <laughs> Captain Poimalee. What do you want, Joe? Well, I think we ought to... Well? I forgot. <laughs> well, wasn't it something to do with that idea of yours about how to handle them gunfighters? What if we tell them mangy no-goods they gotta turn in their guns while Can't they're in town? Can't do that, Joe, not unless I take the guns away from every other man in town. Well, every other man in town ain't a gun slick. The Rangers have a reputation being fair. I am not going to jeopardize. It was too hard to come by. If they stay in line, it'll be treated like any other citizen. No, oh, that's like that's like telling a man he can't shoot a rattlesnake until it bites him. Yeah, but that's the law. Jack Cooper, you were just much for this idea as I was. I know. So am I. But we've got to wait him out. Captain, what what if you were just to ride out of town for well, maybe just a couple of hours and then Joe and and. Me? Uh, no, huh? You two keep a close rein in that Laredo saloon. And if you see Stan Grady and his foreman in town, have him come by. I'll be here. Well, Joe, you know what I don't figure part is all them fellas in town at the same time, why they haven't had a big fight yet. I mean, there's no love lost between them. It is a wonder that they uh, haven't got around a matching reputation. Hey, because I know for a fact that Charlie Stamp has been wanting to try Jug Harriet now for a long time. Sure is peculiar. Well, there's one thing that could be keeping them apart. Keeping them off each other's back, and that's money. Yeah, I reckon. Well, let's move around some.
What happened, Smoke? It was me. What were you shooting at? Nobody. I was just getting ready for the fight. What fight? When we fight the gunslingers. Smoke, there's not going to be any fighting. No rangers in the barracks. Just you and me and nine gunslingers in that saloon. They got to be here for something. Of that kind, there's got to be a fight. Hey, there's Stan Gravy pulling up the bank. Huh? Were we supposed to tell him something? Oh, yeah, the captain wants to see him. That was 1300 you wanted, correct, Mr. Gravy? That was 1300 in gold I wanted. That don't look like gold to me. Ooh, well, but you didn't make any mention well, of it. Well, I'm making mention of it now. No, I'll have to get out of the safe. It'll only take me a minute. Yeah. Well, that'll give you time to point over to the office and talk to the captain. I got nothing to see him about. Uh, he thinks you do. Ghost. Man. Don't you try to bully me right here. Right. Get your head. Sit down, Stan. I've got some good news for you. I'll just stand up. I ain't staying long. I got a telegram from Timmins, Parker, and Reese. Those are the three I sent down to Mexico. Well, did you find my cattle? 50 head. 50 head. Well, I lost 200 head this last time and 120 before that. That ain't many to find. They're still at it, Stan. Well, you could just tell them to get on at it. Don't be so blame cantankerous. Ah, them Mexicans. They think they can just hop over the river and hit all us ranches that have spreads near the border and get away clear. Well, them other ranchers can sit back and wait for you to make a move and Hades to freeze. But Stan Greavy ain't a man to stand around waiting for nothing. And I ain't. No more than I done already. Hold it, Stan. I said my piece and I'm going. You haven't been doing any hiring lately, have you? What I do and when I do is my own business. Out of my way, Riley. Stan Greavy, you got a loose brain. Now, uh, listen, you're looking for a pop in the eye, you come to the right You hire those gunslingers, Stan? You bet your sweet life I did. To cross the border? And to find my cattle and make anybody doggone unhappy if I didn't. You want to start another border war, Stan? Start nothing. Them no good Russians did the start, and I aim to do the finishing. How many men died in the last border war, Stan? How many homes were burned on both sides of the river? How many good ranches wiped out? How many great men died? How many women and children? You know what started it, Stan? You know what started the border war? Some cantankerous old fool who took his drovers across the river because somebody rustled part of his herd. And once that killing started, there wasn't nobody could stop it. And they were just ranch hands, Stan. Not professional gunslingers. Well, I guess I done a dumb thing, Parmalee. I guess you did. Won't you be so gentle on yourself? Well, I'll pay them off and send them on their way. What happens, Stan, if they don't want to go on their way? Well, you can count on my gun. I'll stand right there with you. Well, now, ain't you the brave soul? Dan, you ought to go off someplace and hide your face. Listen, I ain't never hid from nothing. Ain't always done right, but ain't never hid. I'll give them the money, and odds are they'll go. Second thoughts, uh, maybe you better get the rest of your men together in just in case they don't. This is it, Stan. You mean just the three of you? Four. That's right. Don't you forget it. Four. Uh, we should just walk in there with him and run him out of there. They haven't done anything, Joe. Well, they will. They will. But we'll be ready. Oh, Gray Smoke. Go outside and let me know when Mr. Greavy goes in the saloon. Yes, sir. Ain't he got a lot of guts for a kid his age? Yes, he has. And that could be big trouble if a fight starts. Yeah, we don't want him running around loose in the streets with a shooting going on. Chad, take the livery stable. Joe, take the alley beside the general store, and I'll take the bank. And we'll clear the streets. Well, what? You're not a blessed soul out there. Ranger Gray Smoke, Captain. Stan Greavy just went in the saloon. Good. Gray Smoke, you're in charge of the office. Let's get moving. Yes, sir. Now, it, it ain't that I'm not obliged, but, uh, well, there ain't no point in us going looking for cattle that's already been found. 
So I'll give you the $50 each that I promised you. What about the two bits ahead we're supposed to get for all the cattle we bring back, Grevy? Now, wait a minute. I'm trying to be fair with you, boys. $50. Listen, Grevy. Some of us rode from a long way off just for only $50. I know, but, well, it just can't be helped. Now, Mr. Grevy, you got the money with you? Sure. Got it right here. Well, why don't you lay it on the table? All right. Here you are. Thank you. All right, you... all right, all right. Don't get riled. I don't plan on taking out the gold. Just one chance to say something. You need a gun for that, Jug? No. Not for you, Charlie. All right, Jug. Say what you've got to say and get it over with. We want our money. And I've been in town since this morning. I hope that don't mean you want more than your 50. Charlie. You're just two words this side of being dead. Ever since I come into Laredo, I've been counting ranges. All I saw was three, including Parmalee. It's Chad Cooper, Joe Riley, and him. Any of you seen others? All right, one of the other of us knows every ranger there is. If we ain't seen them, then they ain't here. So, here we are in Laredo. And there's nine of us, and three of them. And this town is ripe. Nobody ever tried it before on account of too many ranges here, but there ain't too many ranges here now. And boy, it is just a spit and a whistle away. I say, let's take it. Let's clean out the town. Hmm? Tom? Junior? All right, only one condition. I get Joe Riley. I think I'd like to try Cooper. <laughs> Not on your best day, Charlie. He's mine. Well, it's your hide. You uh, want one of us to call his name so you can get a better look at his back? <laughs> <laughs> when this is over, Jug, you and me, huh? Yeah. Anytime. I had equal shares on everything, agreed? Let's go! You're in a box, boys! Drop them! Charlie, Chad's in the stable. You want him? Go get him. I'll get him. Drop it, Charlie, or I'll have to put a bullet in you. You shot me in the leg, Chad. Did I now? Well, you're lucky, Charlie. I wasn't aiming for your leg. Ellis, you clean out the bank, Junior, you go with him.
don't need it. Well, let's find out, shall we? Thanks for your help, Joe. Anytime, Chad. I've been looking for you, Riley. Yeah, kind of figured. Don't need it. Thanks, Ranger. if you don't look like it, too. Hmm. Maybe you better rest. It's okay, you rest. I'll watch the radar. Oh, make sure you clean the guns before you put them away. Muy pronto, muy pronto. Service is 
getting slower and slower. There are other towns. Not like San Diego. You know, I can't figure you folks out. I thought you were supposed to be real hospitable. You know, like uh, Mia Casa, Su Casa, and all that. Why should we give you what you take by force anyway, Senor Slick? Could be a lot more pleasanter for everybody. I tell you nothing! All right, now, you listen to me, all of you. The sooner you tell us what we want to know, the sooner you'll get rid of us. Now, you've got exactly 24 hours to change your minds. And then I'm going to bring the rest of my boys down here, and things are going to get rough. Now, in the meantime, you break out another bottle of that tarantula juice you call tequila. And who's going to pay for the tequila? Senor Slick. Well, I reckon we have had our quota of drinks on the house dandy, huh? So tonight, somebody else is going to pay. Yes, you. You're gonna pay for our little party tonight. But I ain't got no money. But, senor, I ain't got no money. Today was payday, wasn't it? You ought to have a pocket full of dinero. But, senor, I owe all the money to her. For my new sombrero? Well, now, we aim to have a fine and dandy time tonight. Are you gonna fork over, or do I have to jump it out of your pockets? But, senor, I have saved my money for six months for my sombrerito. Uh, it's much too good for a puny little peon like you. You know, I'd say it was more my, my style. You know it ain't polite to butt in on somebody else's ruckus. Just calling time out. I figure Ben Slick here can stomp you into the dust. Hmm. Well, you ain't refereeing, so you better put that little thing away before that fella behind you does it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Expect me to fall for an old trick like that, huh? <laughs> well, I tried to tell him, but some people just won't take a man's word. And some people just gotta be heroes. I figured there was a good-looking gal in there. That's why you told me to wait outside. You just gotta show off. Show off me while well, I was only trying to... Ooh, 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 ooh. Come back here. Disorderly. But I'm gonna let you go, Slick. And I want you to ride out of here and keep going. Ain't gonna be no more fellas like you hurrah on this town or, or pester these people. You savvy that, Slick. What about him? Oh, we're keeping him. I saw his face on a wanted poster back in Laredo. Dandy Davis, you ought to be more careful the company you keep, Slick. <laughs> I'll be back, mister, with plenty of company. You wish you hadn't tangled with Ben Slick. Yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna be real sorry.
for the damage. It sure is a mess. It wasn't no cause to bust up the lady's place like this. I tried to stop it as fast as I could, man. Yeah. Gracias, senor. Just call me Buck, ma'am. Me? I'm Lupita Valdez. That's a real pretty name. Flattery will get you nowhere, Reese. Oh! oh. Way I figure if fellas started a ruckus, I'd have to pay for it. Now you know I ain't got that kind of money. Well, the senorita could always put in a claim to the ranger headquarters. Oh, no, no, no. But maybe you could work it out, like washing dishes. Do you? Hey, you got a place I can lock this fella up overnight? See, si, Pepito will show you. Pepito, see. See you later, Reese. Uh, here, friend. Yeah. With friends like that, a man don't need no enemies. Senor, this is El Alcalde de San Diablo, Senor Don Julio Cárdenas. Oh, Senor, you see why we sent for you. On behalf of all our people, I wish to express our great gratitude. We are deeply in your debt, Senor. Well, it was a pleasure for me to take that fellow out of circulation and to send that other one packing. But next time, do your fighting in the street, por favor. I cannot afford such expensive rescue. Don Julio. El señor Slick dijo que iba a regresar al pueblo San Diablo. Gonzalez tells me that señor Slick has threatened to return to San Diablo. Oh, I wouldn't worry none. It's me he's after. And I ain't exactly shaking in my boots. But I do worry, señor. This is not the first time that the people of San Diablo have been forced to ask the Texas Rangers for help. Nor will it be the last, unless something is done to prevent these unfortunate incidents. Señor, I think you're the man who can help us. Huh? Sí. These is our men. Come with me, Senor Bennett. We will go to my casa and talk. I will tell you how you can help the people of San Diablo to help themselves. So they uh, figured to organize the farmers into a fighting force to protect themselves against fellows like slick, border outlaws, and trail drovers that keep coming into town to raise a ruckus. So you'll be taking Dandy back by yourself. Well, who was it said his meat goes back? The alcalde, that's who. He didn't say nothing to me about well, it. Well, he did to me. Asked me to stay and take over. First, you're in such an all-fired hurry to get it all over with, and now you've had to change your heart. How come? Well, it was you that captured Dandy, and I wouldn't want to take no credit from you. And you can tell Captain Parmley when you get back that uh, I figure I figured save the Rangers a lot of time and trouble once I teach him some tactics. You're going to teach him tactics? Well, I got a manual on it right there. Gonzales bought it, only he don't savvy all them big words. Let me see. Military strategy by General Custer. I was you, I'd get the one wrote by Sitting Bull. Very funny. Well, all things considered, I figure I'll stick around for a couple of days just to lend a helping hand. Didn't you ever hear that old saying about too many cooks spoiling the broth? Sure I have, but I just hate to see an old pal end up in a soup. Bet you five bucks you can't do it by yourself. El Capitan? El Capitan? Later, Gonzalez. Later. The men of San Diablo Infantry Regiment await you, mi Capitan. Well, as they say in the books, uh, your army awaits without me, Capitan. across the river to practice that thing, Pepito. We can still hear you from there. <laughs> For you, El Capitan. Well, now, I ain't gonna ride in that contraption. It's not to ride, senor. It's to review your troops. <laughs> you think it's funny, Buck? No, no, it's not. No, I don't, I don't think it's funny. <laughs> I sure would like to stay here and watch you put them through their paces, Captain, but me and my prisoner better get back. I'll give the boys in Laredo your best regards. <laughs> I'll tell them about your new job. Dad, hunt! All right, straighten up now. Oh, no. 
Can I be of assistance, mi capitán? Well, if you can make this infernal army come to attention again. Ah, sí. The word in Spanish is ATENCIÓN! Oh. Now, if that's attention, I ain't gonna risk telling them to stand at ease. Oh, this ain't gonna work, Gonzales. It ain't gonna work. Man can't whip these troops into shape without them understanding what he's saying to them. If you will give the orders to me, I will give the orders to them. Well, that, uh, that makes sense, Gonzales. Teniente, mi capitán. Huh? It says in the menu that the man who is next in command to the captain, he is a lieutenant. Oh, yeah, well, uh, go on, Gonzales. Put him through a drill. Let me see what you've taught him so far, huh? Sí, mi capitán. ¡Atención, pelados! ¡Derechitos, eh! ¡Atención! ¡Derechitos, derechitos! ¡De vuelta a la derecha! ¡Ya! ¡Allá, rumbo a la iglesia, tarugos! ¡Rumbo a la iglesia! ¡Listos de frente! ¡Marche! ¡Ya! ¡Uno, dos, uno, uno, dos, cállate! ¡Uno, dos, cállate! face when that mule started hee-haw. I ain't laughed so hard in a month of Sunday. <laughs> Ever hear the old saying about the man who laughs last? Well, old Reese ain't gonna be laughing much. Them fellas will have him bellering like a wounded bull. I wouldn't want to be in his boots, no sirree. Might be real fancy boots to be in. Well, you figure they might give him some as a present? Well, I figure him being friendly with them people might get him a lot farther than Slick got. Could be. He'll beat him to the treasure. Treasure? What treasure? You mean you haven't heard about the treasure of San Diablo? You mean like them tall tales about lost mines in the Mexican mountains? Oh, no. This one's even in the history books. Well, professors wrote all about the conquistadores carrying a fortune in gold bullion. Of course, I reckon you're not much interested in history. Interested? Why, Dandy, I'm downright fascinated. Hmm. Circle and surround them. Unless there's too many. Mm-hmm. No. No. I'm tired of waiting. My feet hurt. She'll be here. She'll be here. Now, you be ready. And remember, when I laugh. When? Come in. Come in. Oh, for me? Oh, thank you, my son. Real pretty, ain't it? Found it in the garden. I am Father Anselmo. I heard about your efforts to help the people of San Diablo, and I wish to express my gratitude. <laughs> you, uh, you are comfortable here? Oh, yes, Padre. Real comfortable, real comfortable. Uh, that is good, because I promised your friend that I would make certain of that. My friend? Senor Buckmeister. He was afraid that you would be lonely here. Oh, he was, was he? He also told me you like to spend an evening in good conversation. Mm. Oh, he did. Or in playing chess. Chess? Yes, and I like to spend an evening over the chessboard, too. Oh, that's uh, something like checkers, huh? Well, perhaps I misunderstood your friend. 
Oh, that ain't hard to do, Padre. Ain't hard to do at all. I, uh, I would like to learn the game some evening, though. Give him a surprise. Oh, well, it should not be too difficult for a man who knows all about military strategy. <laughs> ah, but I think I should be going now. I see you are expecting guests. Well, now, you don't have to rush off just on account of that. You know, Padre, I, uh, I've been meaning to ask Gonzales or the Alcalde how come they named this town San Diablo. Never, ever heard a devil called a saint. Of course, uh, of course you know that Lucifer was an angel before his fall. Well, there was nothing angel-like about him after that. Perhaps I can explain the situation this way. There was a man who was dying, and naturally they called a priest from the village. He asked the dying man, do you renounce the devil and all his wicked ways? And the fast expiring man replied, Padre, in my position, I cannot afford to take any chances of offending anyone. Yeah. <laughs> also, it was summer, and the temperature was very hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure she ain't here but now. She just ain't coming. Go on, Padre. Let's sit down and eat. No use in wasting the wine and all that food and the music. Gratis. <laughs> the Teniente says you wish to speak with me, Capitan. Yeah. What I got to say won't take long, so you better sit down. I got some bad news. Bad news. It just ain't gonna work down here, Leo. Trying to make soldiers out of these farmers is like trying to make a, a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I mean, meaning no disrespect, but yeah, they're good farmers and they're good folks. But that don't mean they're going to make good soldiers. You are discouraged, senor. But about that, we have the saying that such a job is like Rome, which cannot be built in a day. Well, today I tried to teach them how to defend the town by holding the bridge and sniping from the roofs. But their hearts just ain't in this thing. But they're worried about the crops, the harvest, if it rains. Do Julio, it is more. Look at him. Does he look like a leader of an army? No! Cause I ain't, that's why. And I don't know how come I let the two of you talk me into trying to be one, neither. Huh. What he needed, Don Julio, is a uniform. A uniform? See, a uniform? Medals, perhaps? Well, now you just wait one minute. I ain't gonna go parading around with no uniform on. With metal, I'll tell you that right now. But you promised to help us, senor. Surely you will not go back on your word now. Well, no. I wonder if the uniform my brother would fit. Your brother? I've had it packed these many years now, but... Ah, now I remember, Don Julio. It's a fine uniform, Don Julio. Whenever His Excellency come to San Diablo, uh... the women, they just took one look at it, and they have eyes for no other man. Well, uh, well, uh, it wouldn't hurt none just to, just to try it on for size, huh? Magnifico. Excelente. Now you look like what you are, mi general. General? Now I can't be no general. Why, even, even Captain Parmley's only a captain. But he is men who already know how to fight. You know, amigo, you don't make an awful lot of sense in Spanish. But in English, you don't make no sense at all. I wish I had a mirror. You don't need no mirror. You got me, and I say you look magnifico. Well, feels muy tight if you ask me. You sure there ain't no other way? Your men is waiting at the plaza, Your Excellency. All right, all right. We're gonna give it a try. But five will get you ten. It ain't gonna work. It's a bet. It's possible to win a bet from a general. But how does anyone collect? Uh, oh, uh, morning, ma'am. Uh, I mean, senoritas. Uh, buenos dias. You look, 
today. Well, I figured it was kind of fancy myself. It's magnifico, the uniform and the man. Hmm. Reckon you're having your little joke about last night. Oh, uh, please let me explain. All right, explain. I was late. And when I arrived, Gonzalez, he tell me you have another guest. Padre Anselmo. I hope the handsome Henadel will forgive me for being late. I was only trying to make myself beautiful for him. I think the Henadel better go to his men. Perhaps later. I hate to do it this far from town, but we gotta make it look real. I can't wait to see old Reese's face when we show up in San Diablo. <laughs> Well, what do you know? <laughs> That's ten dollars you owe me, Capitan. Oh, yeah. You win, Tanyanti. I am a colonel. And who says? The book says. It says in the manual. Second to a general is a colonel. A full colonel. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, all right, carry on, General. Carry on. Carry what, General? Yeah. They're waiting for your command. We'll do what I tried to teach him yesterday. We'll march him around the town, then split up. Have a few of them make what the manual calls a diversionary maneuver at the bridge. And the rest of them sneak up to catch Slick or whoever's who are on the town from the rear. Now, is that clear? Si, mi general. All right. Just one thing. What's that? How you get them started? Oh, Gonzalez, how did you ever become a colonel? Because you got to be a general. Right shoulder arms. Now I remember. Right, left, right, oh. left, right, No, left. no, no, that's later. Just have them put those weapons on the shoulders so they don't trip all over. See me, General. All right. Attention! Attention! Derechitos! De vuelta a la derecha! Ya! De frente! Marche! Uno, dos, 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 where in the blazes did everybody go? It was a special mass to ask for intercession. There's a very great need for continued good weather. So's a need for protection, Padre. <laughs> we prayed for that, too. And for you, my son. Well, thanks a lot, Padre. Thanks a lot. Well, one thing's for sure. That bell brings them here a lot faster than Gonzalez playing Paul Revere. Hey, you think we could use it as an alarm? Oh, of course. Would you care to dine with me this evening and perhaps take another lesson in chess? Oh, Padre, we ain't getting nowhere with that chess. Besides, I think I got a date. <laughs> Already, our prayers are working. They always work. It's nothing to worry about. What do you mean, nothing to worry about? We have a special mess to say the special prayers. Mm. So now you're just going to sit around waiting for a miracle, huh? Well, as I recollect, there's an old saying, God helps them what helps themselves. So right now, we're going to practice that special strategy I worked out. And we're going to do it until we do it right. But, mi general, it is time for the fiesta. 
Gonzales, what did I tell you about sleeping in the middle of the day? No, mi general, the wine, the music, to celebrate the answer to our prayers and a successful harvest and a victorioso army. Hmm. Well, I must have missed something somewhere. Their great strength is their great faith. Their belief is such that they celebrate before they hear their answers to their prayers. That ain't a sight to behold. Why ain't you headed for Laredo? My horse threw a shoe. I didn't want him to go lame on me. The blacksmith, senor. Over there. We'll be glad to fix that for you. Well, the sooner the better. Captain will be wondering what become of us. Don't seem too happy to see you. Well, I can't blame him. If it was me caught in them fancy duds, I'd hide. I ain't seen nothing like that since that minstrel show in St. Louis. If I'd known you was going to put on a show, I'd have stopped along the trail and fixed some posies. Yeah. <laughs> This just happens to be an official uniform. Don't it, Padre? That of a general. And it all so happens that I whipped these farmers into marching shape without any help from you. The marching? Very good. You did a job, huh? All alone. Pay off. Well, that being the case, you'll be ready to ride with us when we leave. Couldn't do that. How come? Well, now, I couldn't let them fight the first fight alone. No, sir. I got to see them through their baptism of fire. I'm standing right here. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Reese, pretending you're helping these poor folks, and all the time you're trying to pull a wool over their eyes. What's the matter with you, anyway? Nothing the matter with me. Then I suppose there's something the matter with me. You said it, I didn't. What is all this darn foolishness? This is me, Buck. You don't have to pull the innocent with me. Never claim to be innocent. All right, if you ain't innocent, it follows you must be guilty. Guilty of what? Well, maybe you can have booze these folks, but you can't fool old buddies. You and me think too much alike. Ain't got no time to spend listening to your cat and mousing. Got better things to do. Come on, Colonel. Got better things to do, all right, like hunting treasure. It is better to wait here for the blacksmith than to wait in the hot sun. Would you like to have a drink with me, senor? Oh, that sounds very good. I'm a mite thirsty myself. Well, bring in some water. Water? How come I have to drink water? Because you're the prisoner. Well, you're the guard, ain't you? Ain't there some rule about drinking on duty? <clears throat> I reckon he's right. Uh, it ain't that he's so dangerous. It's just that there's still Apaches roaming around these parts. Well, oh, see, si, see. Si. Come to think of it, the biggest Apache massacre in history took place around here somewhere. They caught a bunch of them fellas called the Conquistadores and just Butchered them to the last man. See, si, I heard Apache Annie tell that story all the time. Apache Annie? See, si, hombre, the, the old lady who sells the hats. Oh, oh, her. And it is say that she's 107 years old. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. And she always telling stories about her people and all the battles they fought. She sounds like a very interesting lady. See? Si. Oh, buenos dias, senores. Buenos dias, senor Ruiz. Well, now, that's more like it, Padre. La pita. Caras triato, ojos tu gato. Padre. Padre, what does she say? What does she say? She seems to think you are a wolf in sheep's clothing. After all, we've meant to each other. Well, I'll be a dirty... Uh, 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 uh. Not if my prayers are heard, mi amigo. Well, thank you, Padre. Thank you. She's ready, Senor Buck. Darn you, anyway. What did you say to Lapita? Oh, now, Reese, the way I sweet talk a girl would sound foolish coming from you. You got to think of your own way, of course. Uh, well, you can skip your sweet talk. All I want to know is what you said about me. Nothing about you. Uh, nothing good, that's for sure. 
You don't believe me? Ask him. You know, your name wasn't mentioned. Wouldn't believe him on a stack of Bibles. Just don't figure she was carrying on and cozying up real romantic-like. And you come back, and all of a sudden, like she's spitting mad. You must have said something real bad to make her change so fast and fierce. Word of honor. Then how come she ends up calling me a wolf in sheep's clothing? Feminine intuition, if you ask me. Ain't nobody asking. Now, you, you stop shouting, Reese. You know you ain't supposed to bully a prisoner. Come on, Landy. I need your advice on buying a hat. So long, Reese. We'll see you back in Laredo. Senor Senator. Don Julio. I would like to speak with you. Not many folks doing that today. Senor Bennett, I wish to congratulate you on a job well done. When I saw the marching men today, I marveled. Now you can go back with your friends and know that you have left a fighting force in the capable hands of General Gonzalez. General Gonzalez? The manual said... Now hold it up, you two. Just because them fellas learn how to keep step don't mean they can take care of this here town. They gotta practice shooting and they got... Tomorrow we start the... Target shooting, and I give the orders. And some strategy. You gave the orders. See? Well, you can't whip them fellas in a shootout. Got to learn about diversion. Make them think the danger's in one place, and then hit them where they don't expect it. Uh. Apache Annie will teach us the tricks of her people. When I go to have my uniform make smaller. Now you just look here. A joke's a joke. And I don't know what's going on around here, but I aim to stay until this job's done proper. And until then, you're the colonel, and I'm the general. You understand? See, si, but I don't think you stay here for long. Mm. You like? Well, it's very pretty, but that's a little too fancy for me. Well, Besides which one do you want? Well, it's kind of hard to choose. I mean, buying a hat ain't something you just brush into. When you choose, you call. She don't talk much, does she? Hey. Hey. This looks like parchment. It's kind of old, ain't it? Yeah, it's right now. Spanish writing. You read Spanish writing? Huh. Look at that date. Wow, we... Hey, this here's a map. Starts out here in Mexico. That's where they cross the Rio Grande. And then they come north. With well, them's Indian signs. I can read them. It, it shows where they were ambushed and how many was massacred. This one? Oh, here. I'll give you this for that. For hat? No, for this. For why? Uh, oh, a, f a friend of mine collects old maps. I, I thought I'd give it to him as a present. Uh, this place right here, your people, the Apache, they they fought a big fight there? Oh, big fight. Much killing. Not easy. Men wore hard shirts, hard hats. Hey, conquistadors wore armor. Here, uh, uh, my friend will thank you very much, and, and he'll add this to his collection. <laughs> I make it to be right here. Start digging. Not till I got your word, I get my share of the gold. Oh, that'd be a terrible waste. You being in jail, what could you do with it? Hire me a real smart lawyer. You have to be mistaken. He is a good man, an honest man. A bandido, padre, just like the other ones. Worse, because this one pretends to be a friend. Just because you are a colonel does not mean that you cannot be wrong. If I will get you ten, padre, that I'm right. Perdón, padre. Well, now. Uh-huh. We can settle our wager now. Here he comes. Company, halt! Your sword, senor. My sword? See, si, your sword. Now look here, Don. You look, senor. Uh, Gonzalez, you are making a grave mistake. Please, padre. This is business of military, 
Not the church. There must be no violence. Don't worry, Padre. It will be done by the book. What will be done by what book? Please, senor, surrender your sword. Say it's in the manual when an officer is put under arrest. Arrest for what? For treason, senor. What in the... What in the blue blazes is this all about anyway? The people believe that you're a treasure hunter. Just like Senora Slick and all the others who have played them. Treasure? I don't know nothing about no treasure. Your friend know all about it. So please, senor, surrender your sword. Company, march Stop moaning and groaning. You get the knack of it after a spell. Don't see you doing your share of the work. Well, you wouldn't want me to neglect my duty now, would you? I'm supposed to be guarding you. Well, I got my right too, Buckmeister. And I'm going to have my day in court. And when my lawyer starts talking about lawmen and brutality... Brutality? Why, Dandy, I'm just getting you ready for the rock pile. Now, dig on. And that's how it was, senor. <sighs> senor Alcalde, a man is known by the company he keeps. Even now, his friend digs for the gold. And with my own ears, I heard a man called Danny say the senor Ruiz, too, was searching for the treasure. Well, he was lying. Didn't even know about no treasure till today. <laughs> Silencio! Silencio! Let him speak, here, amigo. We have an old saying, a cada santo se le llega su día, which it means every dog have his day. Oh, you. That's just dandy. Looks to me like you, you all got your minds made up already. And you, mi amigo. Well, you just remember this. I didn't come down here looking for no treasure. I come down here because you people hollered for help. And it wasn't my idea to stay, neither. All this waste of time, we made a mistake. This court martial will be done by the book. It says here that you will be drummed out of the service. Well, you ain't got no drummer. <laughs> but we got a bugler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When are you gonna admit you made a mistake? Trying to tell me I don't know how to read a map? Ah. You bought that map from that old lady. You've been hornswoggled. Hello, Dandy. Slick! Am I glad to see you. Anything down there? No. Well, if this ain't the map, we'll go back to town and get the real one. We'll give them people a choice between talking or dying. And when they do, it's gonna be him that'll do the digging. The gold for us, and a nice, big, fat grave for you. I am grieved, senor. I wish you had taken my advice and left San Diablo. This ceremony is not to my liking. Uniform. to understand that for Gonzalez it was painful too. To see an idol fall is a terrible thing. Yeah, and I'll bet you'd be praying around this town in this uniform before sundown. Uh, mi amigo, it is a noble act to forgive an injustice. What are they saying? Buck and his men, they are coming back. And we 
ring that bell. I'll hold him off as long as I can. With what, my son? Just get going. I'll, I'll think of something. Grab the Padre. I won't do nothing with him as a hostage. I'm going to say this for the last time. You up there in the window. I can see you. That goes for you back there on the porch. I want you all to listen. Uh, do you think there's any chance that people will help us? As I have told you before, they have no leader. I've got a very simple proposition. You tell me where the treasure's hid, and nobody gets hurt. You hear that? Yeah, you hear that? You all better listen. Now, if you love your padre and your alcalde, you've got to the count of three. One. Two. To let men like you take away our treasure, is to take the heart of this village. I would rather die than live in shame. You'll have a couple of innocent lives on your conscience, Padre. We know of no such treasure as that of which you speak. I'm sorry about this, my friend. I've got nobody to blame but myself. Shame on you, man of the cloth, lying like that. to the time of the Crusades. But whether or not it is part of the legend about a lost treasure, <laughs> one cannot be certain. Well, uh, Don Julio was willing to die for it, Padre. Ah, mi amigo, the treasure of San Diablo, the real treasure, is the faith of its people. And that chalice is a symbol of their faith. Always, when their fortunes were low or their souls were troubled, they'd come to Mass and pray together. And always, those prayers have been answered. 
Yeah, well, that's the first time I was ever called to answer anybody's prayers, Padre. Well, reckon you won't... Uh, reckon you won't be bothered by any more treasure hunters, Padre. The armies learn how to take care of San Diablo. Well, adios, Padre. Vaya con Dios. Attention! <laughs> I was a fool to think about you, senor. But when you came back and you don't have to, I knew I was wrong. But always, the people of San Diablo will remember their good friend, Ranger Ruiz. Well, <laughs> Well, good luck, General. Adios, amigo. <laughs> oh, it's muy magnifico. Mi general. Amor mío. <laughs> hey, I figure we can strike up a bargain. You don't tell the captain about me to capture, and I won't tell the captain about your fancy uniform. And also the matter of our bet, five dollars. I couldn't make them into an army. Come on. And there's also a matter of our bet about the effect of the uniform. And then there is the matter of our wager, General Gonzalez. <laughs> Tôi xương gãy
chúng ta sẽ tô cho trên cái quần màu xanh nha mọi người tô hai chiếc tất màu cam à, mình vừa tô xong màu bút tranh chú hiêu à, theo một cái đồng cổ vuông rất là xinh cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video của mình và đừng quên ủng hộ mình bằng cách ấn like subscribe kênh nhé xin chào xong thì mình xin có cái bút chì như thế này nếu như cả nhà thích video của mình thì mọi người ấn like, share và subscribe kênh của mình nha xin chào và hẹn